Thank you very much. So um, uh, my name is Gianni Grasso. I'm working for, I'm one of the founders, sorry, of Columbus Superconductors. I'm also working in the company. Um, so Columbus Superconductors is a company based in Italy, which is entirely focused on, on magnesium diboride um, wire production. So um, uh, I would like to thank uh, Carlo Rubia for the, for the great introduction of our technology. Uh, my presentation here has the scope to really give you the confirmation that the MGB2 technology is not a technology for the future. It's a technology we already have today, or actually we had it already yesterday because the cable uh, that CERN, uh, with, the, with the support of, of IASS, um, was able to demonstrate uh, several weeks ago was really, uh, really striking. So. Um, Anyway, um, I'll give you really, um, the idea is really for me to give you uh, an understanding that this technology is really uh, available today and that it can be really uh, used into, uh, in industrial applications since, I mean, really um, uh, without any, any doubt. So MGB2 is a relatively new uh, superconducting material. As a superconducting material, it has the capability to uh, carry much more current than, a, uh, than an equivalent um, uh, copper conductor with the same uh, size. So typically, uh, if you compare um, MG, an MGV2 wire with a copper wire, it, it may be able to carry up to uh, typically 1,000 times more current than an equivalent copper wire of identical cross-section. So this, is, this gives you the, the feeling why, I mean, the uh, 16 millimeter a uh, cable, a CERN cable was uh, carrying so much uh, current. Why MGB2? Well, MGB2 has really, um, is a, I mean, has been recently discovered as a superconductor, but the material was known already since the, uh, the 50s. So only 10 years ago, uh, very surprisingly, some Japanese guys measured the electrical properties of MGB2 at low temperature, but it's, it's a very well-known material. And as we heard already before, it's really very simple. It's a really binary compound of, of really non-rare uh, and I would say also non-toxic uh, elements. Um, and so uh, definitely it, is, it has the potential to become really the lowest cost and, and, and easiest um, uh, material, supercutting material for, um, for our application. Uh, in, in our company, we have immediately felt this, uh, this potential of the material, so we, we've been really working in the past decade to set up uh, in industrial manufacturing of, of, of this uh, uh, wire into, into really long, long conductors, and I think this is what we succeeded to do, and uh, um, this is the idea of what I'm, I'm telling today. So, just the scenario, so um, basically superconductivity is um, maybe people uh, don't know that uh, there are quite significant applications of superconductivity already today, but mostly on, on really very confined environment, like in, 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 in the research uh, world and in, in MRI. Basically, uh, medical imaging is using a significant amount of superconductors. So, um, when it is, uh, let's say, when there are no other solutions, actually superconductivity are used, and this is because uh, this was the approach of the past, because superconducting supercond materials were only available uh, with very low operating temperatures, so requiring liquid helium for cooling. With MGV2, we have this new opportunity of a material working at uh, slightly higher temperature, but high enough to use to enable the use of, of uh, helium gas or uh, liquid um, hydrogen or, or um, even dry, uh, dry cooling. And this is really uh, a new, I mean, um, uh, a new feature uh, that MGV2 enables with a low cost conductor. So we mentioned before that there are other higher temperature superconductors, so-called oxide superconductors, but they, they, um, which are even operating up to liquid nitrogen temperature, but they are really much more complex and expensive than MGB2 and uh, much more difficult to manufacture in, uh, in, in long length. So um, today we, um, I mean, in the past years, we already demonstrated uh, MGB2 technology in, in medical imaging. This is just to say that, um, uh, well, it has nothing to do with cables, but it gives you the feeling that the same uh, scaling um, we have heard about cables uh, was also, is also achievable in, in MRI. So if you compare a standard resistive, so non-superconducting MRI system with an MG2 based one, it is basically using MG2, we have a system which is 10 times lighter, 20 times more energy efficient, and half the cost 
of, of a non-superconducting solution. So uh, superconductivity is not necessarily more expensive than a, uh, a non-superconducting solution when, the, um, uh, when it is uh, uh, used in practical application. Uh, and I think in, in, in power cable, in the high power uh, cables, we heard that we are basically falling in the same, um, in the same um, situation. So how, how, uh, how an MHV2 uh, wire looks like? Uh, in principle, it looks like, I mean, we're in Italy, so it's like a spaghetti with some, uh, so it's a, it's a round wire. Huh? Uh, from the outside, it looks like um, a uh, stuffed, stuffed spaghetti, so it's, a, it's, a, um, a, it's just a round wire with, with a uh, very basic um, metallic ma matrix. So what you see, these are typical cross sections. So, is there a pointer here, or is there a laser? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so um, this is how a typical uh, wire uh, looks like. So this is just a, a, a wire which is maybe a point le less than a millimeter in diameter. So this is a, a very fine wire. Uh, in cross section, these black dots are superconducting filaments. So every filament is only a few. Um, um, uh, uh, tens of microns in, in diameter, and you should consider this each filament is composed by very fine uh, sub-micron superconducting particles. So, th so the manufacturing technology is somewhat complex because we need we have to manufacture such wires in, in length of uh, kilometers to tens of kilometers, uh, and inside each wire we should have continuous superconducting filaments um, uh, filled with MG2 along the length. But we, we have a process uh, that is capable of demonstrating this result. And, uh, and really, the, the, the continuity of superconductivity uh, in, in these wires has been, um, has been achieved. So each of these wires, as, again, is able to carry currents in the range of hundreds of amps, although they're very fine. So hundreds of amps with no dissipation, so no electrical resistance. So this is really the, um, um, uh, the biggest advantage. So in this case, uh, we are at a temperature of 20 Kelvin, and, and again, the, depending on the magnetic field, the wire is able to carry really up to 500 amps in, in, in half a Tesla field, so uh, really the, the, the cable conditions. And this is really a sub-millimeter, sub uh, a single sub-millimeter wire. Uh, of course, we, we, um, uh, because of this advantage, we think uh, MG2 can really play a role uh, more in general uh, towards in, in the green economy uh, scenario. So we think that cables um, uh, are one very important um, uh, uh, application we are looking to, but of course, because of this advantage of, of superconductivity, uh, super so high efficiency, we think that uh, we could also use the same wire technology in, in other uh, energy-related uh, applications like energy storage, uh, generation, uh, protection, conversion, and not only in, in, the, in the transmission sector. Um, but the, the uh, industrial manufacturing of these wires, we started the new production plant uh, about a year ago. Uh, so it was um, um, uh, spring uh, 2013. Uh, these are just some numbers of June 2013, just a few months after having started the new plant. And just to say that we are really industrial, um, uh, we, in a single month, uh, we produced uh, more than 80 kilometers of, of superlating wire. Uh, more than 70 kilometers were shipped to, um, to, to customers uh, which purchased the wires. And uh, uh, I would say mostly, almost, oops, sorry. Uh, sorry, uh, 99 percent of what we produ of the wires we produced were more than a kilometer in, in length, and more than half the production were um, of that month uh, was longer than three, uh, three kilometer in a single piece. Which means that really, I mean, uh, uh, besides the fact that the manufacturing line uh, was was really new, it was already a very uh, very efficient in manufacturing long wires. And also, I think the very nice uh, feature is that uh, I mean, it's a high-tech product, but it's really fast in processing. So we are able to, man to transform magnesium and boron elements into a fully superconducting wire with a product, uh, production cycle of a few days, let's say, up to uh, 20 days, depending on the, on the wire layout. But it, uh, basically, I mean, it's really, really a very fast uh, processing technology, which means, which gives also the feeling that the, 
the scaling up of, of the process is really um, quite uh, straightforward. Uh, so these are our targets for production. So um, basically, we, uh, this year we expect to produce in the range of 1,000 uh, kilometers, a little bit more. Uh, to, uh, doubling each year, so next year 2,000 kilometers. So um, uh, 2015, uh, 2,000 kilometers of, of wire means, in principle, an amount of a conductor able to, I mean, required to produce several tens of kilometers of the, of the high power um, um, uh, cables we were discussing before. So we are already, in spite we are, of the fact that we are, let's say, 10 years before, I mean, the <laughs> Uh, technology, uh, I mean, uh, the, um, uh, the deadline, I mean, okay, to, to, to qualify the technology, 2025, I think we already today have a, a manufacturing capacity um, uh, a, being able to supply, I mean, real, I mean, uh, real cables, uh, um, I mean, uh, I think 10 years in advance, I think, which is, uh, I would say, also um, uh, quite convincing. So, okay, this is our, um, of course, our product strategy, so we have a why we are producing MG2? We produce this material not only for the uh, energy sector, but for the medical sector, of course, because the the possibility to get rid of the liquid helium is not only an advantage for the energy, but for the medical sector. So, coupling the uh, the two uh, the two uh, application domains, we can really um, uh, take the highest uh, I mean profit and the highest uh, let's say um, advantage of the technology uh, we have. Uh, of course, uh, there are uh, different projects than, than, uh, than transmission. Um, well, I was hoping to have Nexon here to speak about the cables. So I was also giving uh, a broader view. Um, uh, so we're also working on, on the superacting uh, wire for application in, in, uh, in uh, offshore, uh, next generation offshore wind turbines. So 10 uh, megawatts uh, plus uh, wind turbines with much smaller, much more compact size. And here again, the advantage of having is superconducting material with a very high current density can really make very high power um, wind turbines much smaller and, and lighter than, than uh, traditional ones. Uh, of course, we have a, a lot of new ideas and demos. One, of course, is including also uh, <laughs> some, um, I mean, picture from the um, Airbus um, Corporation, but we have a, a number of developments. Uh, there has been also a very um, a uh, very basic uh, liquid hydrogen cable demonstration uh, made in Russia uh, where they were using our old tape conductors and they cooled down by liquid hydrogen flow. So the, the technology mentioned by, by Professor Rubia has been um, also uh, demonstrated on a much smaller scale by a Russian group. And, um, and also we're working on, on a different number of components for the grid like uh, also for current limiters that may be also